Hey guys, welcome to the video. This is a 2005 G35. I'm diagnosing a issue with the vibration and speed. That's it. Yeah, that's bad. And that does change with the speed of the car. So that means it's part of the spinning assembly. So that could be a possible bearing issue, the wheel itself, the tire. It could also be an axle. So we're gonna diagnose that, find out where it's coming from, and then we're gonna fix it. First thing to check is to make sure there's no bumps or anything on the tires. There's no big bolts sticking out or anything noticeable. They should be good to go, but check them all anyways. Make sure it's nothing obvious. So I just checked out all four tires. They all look fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and jack the car up and then check the rim and then also check the wheel bearings. So you felt around all the tires, it looks good. Now you're jacked up off the ground. We wanna check the wheel bearings first. So you'll have to forgive my curb rash here. Maybe that'll get fixed someday. First, we're gonna give it a shake. So if you're on jack stands, be careful. You don't wanna pull or push too hard. But essentially you're gonna test the up and down motion and the side to side motion. The wheel shouldn't move at all, it should be rock solid. If you gently do it and you hear a wobble, that could be a bad wheel bearing. So that's what we're looking for. And again, up and down and left and right. Next, we're gonna do a spin test. So we're gonna spin the wheel as quickly as we can. Um, obviously, make sure your parking brake's down and you're out of gear. So here, we'll just spin it as quickly as we can. And we're listening for any strange noises. That drag you're hearing is the brake pad against the rotor, so that's normal. If the wheel's not spinning or turning at all, or there's one part of the rotor that's a lot louder than the others, that could be indication that your brake caliper is seized up. Uh, maybe it's dragging on the rotor, or you have a warped rotor that's not contacting it smoothly. So this wheel sounds good. The rotor is not making any weird noises, the bearing's moving smoothly, and there's no wobble. All right, while we're working on this wheel, we can also check the rim to make sure the outside part of the rim doesn't have any dents or it's an oblong shape causing that rumbling as we go down the road. So all I've done here is put a clamp onto this chair, and if the rim is not a perfect circle, we will see um, a change in the distance between the wheel and my clamp. So now we've got the wheel aligned. We've got our clamp set against the rim. It's not touching it though, just a small gap there. So here we're just gonna spin the wheel. So you can see there's no large dents or anything noticeable when I spin the rim. So this wheel looks good. So now we've checked this wheel out. Now it's time to move around the rest of the vehicle until we find our troublemaker. On the next wheel, no wobble, no noises when trying to move it. So let's give it a spin. Wow, that sounds really bad. Compare that to the other wheel, a lot more noise. That's likely a bearing issue. So you can hear a bunch of grinding, it's inconsistent. We're gonna swap out the bearing on this wheel.
So we found the problem. It's right here in the passenger front wheel. So I'm gonna turn my car around. We're gonna jack it up and get that bearing swapped out. All right, we got the wheel off. So now we have a couple things to do to get to the wheel bearing. First, we gotta take our caliper off. I'm gonna have to take these spacers off and then the rotor as well. We are behind the caliper. There's two large bolts. I believe they're 22 mil right here that will have to break loose. These might be a pain in the ass to get out. So I'm gonna douse them with some PB blaster, get the breaker bar, get to work. I'm gonna have to take this spacer off before I can take off the actual rotor. In order to get them off, I need to preload the suspension so that way I can really apply some torque here without the whole car moving. And then I put a jack stand here to prevent it from rotating. So let's get them off. That's why you put a little anti-seize on the back of your rotor, so that way this actually comes off nicely. And now we're to the hub assembly. So you can already hear how rattly that is. So now we have four bolts on the back side we're gonna take off, and then hopefully we'll be able to get this out. Hopefully you guys can see the four bolts holding the hub assembly in. Got one right here, one right there, one up here, and then one over here. This is that ABS sensor right here. I don't think you need to take it out unless you're worried about hitting this wire or pulling it out. So I'm gonna leave mine in. So what I did was I loosened the bolts uh, holding the hub assembly in place, but I didn't fully remove them. So if we look here, you can see there's still some thread showing. Um, for this guy, it was a little tricky, but with a normal wrench and some sockets, should be doable. I left the thread exposed so I can push on these and try to hammer them out. Uh, that way I can loosen the hub from its assembly and get it out. So when you can't get it loose, you gotta consult to the advanced tools. After a lot of hammering and maneuvering, finally making some progress. So what I did to get it out was I hammered from the backside to loosen everything on those bolts and then eventually started prying around this seal a little bit. As long as you don't damage this surface, that's okay. I also used a lot of PB blaster here that kind of seeps through and that helps loosen things up as well. So I went with a uh, Moog bearing. They've been around for a while. They make pretty good parts. They're not as expensive as OEM, so let's give it a shot. So we cleaned up this area with a brass brush and some shop rags, a lot of grease and some rust in there to clean up before we put the new bearing in. Um, brass is better on these types of parts. Um, get some of it loose, but sometimes you also need stainless steel. That works a lot faster. But the main surfaces you're worried about are this mounting surface and then inside of here. I uh, want it to be smooth, no debris in there. Make sure it's clean before we put the new one in.
Yep, this one bolt is a I'm gonna dial these hub bolts into about uh, 60 foot pounds. The last bolt's impossible to get to with the torque wrench, so I'm just gonna go by hand. Everything torqued down, it's time to put the rotor and my spacer back on. I'm going to put this to about 80 foot pounds. If I can, I'm going to try to get those brake caliper bolts to 110 foot pounds. We'll see how that goes. Done, did it, fresh wheel bearing. Ready to take it for a test drive, see how it sounds. Hopefully night and day better. You guys hear that? Just normal road noise? Yes, fix the problem, good to go now. Night and day difference. It did take a while to get that in, but hey, car work's not always easy. If you guys like the video, make sure to thumbs up and subscribe. Bye, y'all.